As soon as I started talking to Legendary about the potential of making this film, I went back and I rewatched every single Godzilla movie in order from start to finish, which was definitely something I'd never done before. And I did the same thing with all the King Kong films. And it was really interesting because watching um, the original Godzilla films, it was almost like re-experiencing my childhood to a certain degree because a lot of them I hadn't seen since maybe I was in like second grade, um, especially the early uh, Showa era ones. And, uh, and, and so the process was just really unique in the sense that, you know, I was able to reinvigorate myself as a filmmaker and as a person um, you know, in, in a way where I was able to kind of almost trace back the origins of what made me excited about movies in general. I remember as, as a kid having arguments literally on the playground with my friends about who would win in a fight of uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. And even though there was, you know, the 1960s film which already existed, it didn't quite satiate that, you know, that answer, you know, like it, it's very open-ended who won that fight. And so the debate kind of raged between friends of mine and, you know, and I don't want to say necessarily what, um, what my perspective was at the time, because I think it'll give away um, the, the, this film, because really my, my answer to that question, who would win in a fight, Godzilla versus King Kong really hasn't changed since about first grade, I think. And so it, 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 that was what was exciting about doing this film was that I was able to uh, put my stamp on that, 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 that question, the big question of who would win in, the, in that fight. And uh, that, more than anything, was the reason why I wanted to make this movie. Well, I think you can look at the film as two separate stories that intersect eventually. Um, and one is sort of Team Kong and Team Godzilla. And each one's kind of following, you know, each human story is following the monster story as well. So you have Millie Bobby Brown, um, who's kind of spearheading one end of the journey, and she's obsessed with Godzilla. And, you know, she she's convinced that Godzilla is... Um, misunderstood you know the, the world thinks that Godzilla's turned his back on everyone and that he's destroying things recklessly he's a villain but she thinks that there's something else going on and so her end of the journey is you know trying to prove that Godzilla's you know not this evil force on the other end of the journey we have uh, Alexander Skarsgård sort of spearheading a mission with Kong where Kong has essentially been um, uh, you know, Kong has been being used as sort of a bodyguard. This is a battle that hasn't uh, been waged since 1962. So, um, you know, it, it, for us, it's like, it, it's got to be the definitive version and the most satisfying version of these monsters coming together. Um, and so, you know, in doing that, you know, knowing that, you know, everybody's got their favorite and, um, and you have to satisfy both of those. And, and, and they're both powerful monsters with their own specialties and weaknesses. And, and so that's all taken into consideration. And so, you know, for us, it was just important that this is just the most epic battle of all time. Kyle Chandler, you know, he's been, you know, it's, it's great whenever you're bringing people back onto something, you know, like a, in a sequel fashion because they have sort of a shorthand and an understanding of what they're getting into. And, you know, and, and, and I think Kyle has this, you know, great reputation of being sort of America's dad. Um, and, and he plays that so well. And his relationship with, with Millie uh, behind the scenes and on camera is, it, it, it's just, it's, it's exactly what you'd want that sort of, uh, father-daughter relationship dynamic to be and uh, it's so um, it's so quintessential to this type of film you know? the, the cast has just been unbelievable I mean from you know everybody from Alexander to Kaylee who's a newcomer you know she's a she's a deaf actress and she's 10 years old I think and she's probably the most professional actor I've ever worked with in a weird way it's really bizarre um, she she I, this is her first movie but she seems to know more than anybody here <laughs> which is a huge relief you know anytime you're working with kids it's you know there, there's always this kind of you know trial and error period but with her we never had any of that 
it's a very physically demanding film for a lot of these actors. So somebody like Alex is really amazing because he's able to do all the physical stuff. And you know, he what I like about him is that he he knows that this this film needs sort of an action star. But neither one of us wanted to do sort of the stoic kind of like straight man, boring action guy. We wanted a guy who was who had a lot of flaws and, you know, is it, it's, it's kind of nerdy in a lot of ways. He's, he's not your normal action hero. Um, and, and Alex really, you know, he pushed that into the character from the get-go, which was really great because it really needed that extra push. And, you know, he wanted it to have a little bit of an 80s homage. So if you look at his costume, we, we gave him these crazy Back to the Future, you know, sneakers and, you know, that type of thing. So that it, it, it subtly kind of echoes back to the 80s without being, you know, ridiculously on the nose about it. You know, I've been a really big fan of Rebecca Hall for years, like with her, especially with her movie Christine that she starred in. And so, you know, like I was absolutely thrilled. It was one of those things where when you're casting a movie, there's always sort of a best case scenario and, um, and you rarely get that, you know. Um, and uh, weirdly, she was my best case scenario. And I, I was actually shocked that, you know, she, you know, was so on board with doing it. You know, but she's, she brings a lot of depth to the character and, you know, has a great relationship with Kaylee. If you see them ever behind the scenes, I mean, uh, she can communicate with sign language with her um, just as well as her interpreter. I mean, most of the time when we're rolling, you know, you have to communicate. Usually you just call it out, you know, action, cut, you know, uh, blah, 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 you know, but, you know, with, when somebody's deaf, you know, obviously that goes out the window. And so if you look at like any of like the takes behind the scenes, it's like Rebecca's always the one, you know, kind of letting Kaylee know she's giving her cues. She's kind of, you know, squeezing her on the shoulder when she needs to know that there's a, a cue for things. And so she's really go gone above and beyond for that type of thing as well. Lance Reddick is somebody who, you know, I've worked with on The Guest and uh, I was really excited to bring him back in on this film. Um, we had a great experience on that movie and um, uh, and he plays sort of the one of the heads of Monarch and that's a role that you know we haven't seen in this world and so I wanted somebody who had this very kind of um, untouchable stature to him and you know and, and a gravitas and, and immediately Lance is you know an obvious choice that came to mind. I mean I think that the movie in, in itself is it, it, it's so many different things all in one, in one kind of cohesive package. It's, it's a futuristic sci-fi fantasy film with the biggest fight scenes of all time. Um, it, it's got a little bit of everything to be excited about. It's hard to kind of like narrow it down. It's not as simple as just saying like, I think this person or this monster should win versus this one for this reason or whatever. And, you know, taking out my biases of who I thought should win going into it. At the end of the day, we had to kind of set that aside and say, okay, let's look at these two monsters objectively with all the skills that they have um, individually and what actually happens when you put them together and they fight. What does that actually look like and who would actually win? And at the end of the day, it's really the most important thing, even beyond who was the winner, to me going into it, is that there absolutely had to be a winner. You know, you, this, is, this is not another movie that you can, a versus movie, where you should walk away still asking the question, who won? This has to be the definitive answer to the question, who wins, Godzilla or Kong? And... Um, and, and so, you know, my, my biases aside, um, I, I honestly can't say that uh, I like one more than the other because uh, I, I love them both the same in completely different ways. Hi there, here's today's daily fact. Godzilla's name is actually based on a tough guy working at the film studios where the Godzilla films were produced. And mixing the term gorilla with the Japanese word for whale, you get the name of one of the most famous monsters of all time. Remember to click below to subscribe, and if you like my t-shirt, you can get one for yourself at the link in the description.